The House of Representatives Committee on Constitution Review has held an international legislative dialogue on women and constitution amendment. The event is aimed at stressing bar or addressing rather barriers to women's political advancement and to create strategies for sustainable changes. While declaring the event open, the Senate President Gatswila Fabio highlighted the critical role of women in Nigeria's democracy since independence. Akwabio, who was represented by Senator Kaka Shehu, noted that the Senate is committed to empowering women through the passage of a legislation against gender-based violence and to increase women's representation in decision-making. As we engage in this international legislative dialogue on women and constitution amendment, let us remember the pivotal role of women, the pivotal role women play in shaping our society and the future for envision for Nigeria. The renewed hope agenda of the Tinubu administration recognizes this truth, dedicating itself to the empowerment and inclusion of women. We believe that the progress of our nation hinges on the active participation of all its citizens, especially women. The 10th Senate has made significant strides in supporting women's empowerment, where past legislations aimed at combating gender-based violence, ensuring that women can live free from fear and oppression. We have taken steps to increase women representation in decision-making bodies, including introduction of gender quotas in political party nominations. I think we need to be appreciated. The House of Representatives Speaker Tajuddin Abbas also in his address in the issue of Nigeria's low female representation stated that only 20 out of 469 National Assembly seats were occupied by women, which to him reflects institutional barriers rather than a lack of capable women to lead. He advocated for affirmative action in such a way that seats are reserved for women to align with democratic principles which is supported by the African Union and Inter-Parliamentary Union. The Deputy Speaker and Constitutional Review Committee Chairman, Honorable Benjamin Kalu, highlighted the urgency of the reform. Thus, increased representation of women is not a luxury, but a necessity for sustainable national development and stability. Around the world, and particularly in Africa, we see encouraging examples of gender inclusion. Rwanda, with over 60% women representation in its parliament, has shown us that robust intentional policies work. South Africa, Namibia, and Senegal all have taken significant strides towards inclusivity, reshaping their political landscapes in ways Nigeria can learn from. These countries, have demonstrated the profound impact of women's perspective in governance and development. For Nigeria, the current, current numbers are disheartening. Since 1999, women's representation in our National Assembly has remained disappointingly very low. I'm honored to lead the House Committee on Constitution Review where we have proposed bills aimed at correcting the gender imbalance within government at all levels. One such critical bill, a bill for an act to author the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 to provide for a seat reservation for women in the National and State Houses of Assembly, HB 1349, alongside all the four gender justice bills are under consideration. This proposed legislation is designed to remedy the low representation of women by creating additional seats, specifically for female candidates in national and state. Others who spoke at the event are the Deputy Ambassador of the European Union Delegation to Nigeria, Zisumos Vegas, and the representative of the First Lady Senator, Olure Metinubu. There is a strong evidence all around the world that as more women are elected to office, there is an increase in policy making that emphasizes quality of life and reflects the priorities of families, of youth, of marginalized groups for a more effective 
social, financial, and political inclusion. In this context, the ongoing, and somebody could say historical, constitutional reform process presents a singular opportunity to leverage political inclusion by adopting an inclusive legal framework that promotes equal participation of all Nigerians, regardless of gender, ethnicity, age, and disability status. Also, very important issues when we're discussing constitutional reform. While some gains were recorded in women representation in state's House of Assembly membership during the last election cycle, particularly in states like Kwara, where we had five, and I think Ekiti had six. This was, however, not the case at the current 10th National Assembly, as only four women were voted into the Senate out of the 109 total members, while the House of Representatives has only 16 women out of a total of 360 members. This development, you will agree with me, gives credence to the propriety of today's gathering as it affords us the opportunity to discuss prevalent challenges hindering legislative actions and enhance awareness on the importance of temporary special measures such as legislated gender quotas, reserved seats, and political party quotas as gender responsive approaches to enhancing political inclusion and participation of women in the country. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.